A blessed morning, grateful gap. I just wrote. Go, go through the academy, then after you finish the academy, can you get sworn in pretty much? That's like where it all starts. And stuff. Yeah, you know, you, it starts when you get hired. Okay. Well, yeah, y'all, I just finished my four and a half bike ride. To come speak with my special guest this morning. It was an awesome ride. You know, it's my new thing. I've been cycling. Uh, so I'm about to jump to the daily verse, and then I'm just going to get into, you know, my my interview for the day. So the daily verse for June 11 derives from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. And it states as follows. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And again, that's from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. <clears throat> yeah, man. So this morning, my special guest here with me is a gentleman I met when I was in Europe, um, serving in the military in Germany. He was actually one of the first um, NCO that I worked with as, as becoming an NCO and things like that. So um, without further ado, he's actually a state trooper now. So my boy, um, but um, sorry, Frost is who I met in the military. And um, that's who I'm going to be doing my interview today. But this was a gentleman who, who uh, really... You know, saw a lot in me because uh, again, that was the first you know NCO that I worked with as me being an NCO. You know, I had just became a sergeant, and um, he was a squad leader or a team leader in um, an platoon. And um, yeah, man, like I said, he was just the, the, the first direct gentleman who, who who was able to assess me, and um, you know, we were just always positive feedback. We connected, you know, off the rip, you know, um, things like that. Just a high mutual respect for one another, just from the journeys and things we you know we made in our lives. So. Again, um, without further ado, this is my my good friend, it's Trooper Frost, right here. Mm-hmm. Say what's up, man. What's going on, Barry Boy? <sighs> yeah, man. So what's up, man? How, how's life being here in North Carolina? Life in North Carolina has been pretty good, man. To be honest, um, got back here in 2017 after I uh, ETS from the army. Um, kind of figured or knew that this is where I wanted to come back to. Uh, Could have went back to Florida, but um, I felt like North Carolina offered a better opportunity career-wise um, here than it would have uh, in the state. So decided to come back here. But it's been pretty good. I mean, I can't complain much. I mean, same thing that I fell in love with when I came here in 2003 um, to attend Shaw University. Uh, some of the same things that I actually uh fell in love with or still love to this day about being here or whatnot so um for me it for me and for uh for my kids man this is uh it's been pretty good it's been pretty consistent with from the initial standpoint okay yes and my boy is a girl dad you know what i'm saying this is another thing um uh, we had it come when i first met him my daughter was my wife was pregnant and um you know i, I was having a daughter and he his daughter was born and all this good stuff you know we were just you know having many talks about you know, just the joys of being, a, you know, father of girls and all these type of things. And I have three daughters and it's just like, you know, like, I ain't, I ain't saying full circle, but it's just like, you know what I mean? We spoke and, and we manifested, you know what I mean? Like, just the, you know, fatherhood and things like that. And I really took heed of that, as we can see, you know what I mean? But, um, man, we remember, the, I think one of the first conversations I remember having with you, I was like, man, I said, when you gonna have some kids? Like, nah, man, I ain't doing that, man. So I'm straight, I'm good or whatnot. And, bro, I'll, I'll be daggone, man, you, you ended up. You uh you and your family, man, y'all end up being pregnant or whatnot, and here you are, uh years later, man, you got three kids, man. So that's beautiful, man. Yeah, I mean, man, I've al- I've always told you that's been beautiful, man, and and to this day, man, I still feel the same way, man. So that's that's a positive, man. That's a big positive. For sure, for sure. Positive. Yeah, man. What you got? So so um. Well, first of all, I know you've been doing great things in the community. You know, at you know which it, which your job work and things like that, getting a lot of, you know, um, un un unruly and un you know um pe- people who shouldn't be on the road basically you know what i'm saying you definitely been you know diving in on that and try to get people with you no know, bad you know driving skills and who, who who making the highways unsafe you know you've really been cleaning up the streets so I, again i just want to tell you thank you for that you know and just keep, keep doing a great job and yes, sir. really you know on um, the community and you know again like really i'm glad i do know you, you know what i'm saying as a officer standpoint you know what i mean because again we've had this conversation so many times where the narrative on officers is so you know what i mean so many things happening with officer related stuff, even you know, over the years, just even from you know the black community, how we came up, all this type of stuff, right? You know, it's, it's just it, it's good to have you know, genuine gentlemen, especially that I know, you know what I'm saying, that's in the you know, in a, an officer force and all these type of things that really you know, have you know, a great hearts beating on want to do real make real changes in the community, you know what I'm saying, not be none of that, that let the bads 
control, you type like you know, have power type stuff. You know what I mean? You treat people how they want to be treated, like, and, you, and you'll treat people like like people. You feel what I'm saying? So again, Absolutely. I really, I really appreciate it and respect it about you. you know, yes, overall, sir. like I said, from when we first even met, you feel what I'm saying? We've always, you know, clicked. Like I, I remember, I got to the um, platoon. You know, I remember, I remember my first PT day, bro. This is crazy, bro. I'm telling you, I already knew. I was like, okay. So, sorry, Frost come to play. He tried, like, I ain't, I ain't going to say he tried, but he, like you say, you, you tried to see what I was about. You feel what I'm saying? As an NCO, I was a new NCO. And uh, you just trying to see, like, you know, was I worthy of, of being there. You know, obviously I was, you know what I mean? But it was just to the, the fact that I appreciate it and I love that you, you you wanted to challenge me to see what I had. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's important, especially being in the military. You have to know, you know who's going to be to your left and who's going to be to your right and who's going to be training soldiers, who's going to be, you know, leading soldiers, all this type of stuff. So that's important. I'm glad, you know, again, that we, you know, that you saw enough of me to try to get that out of me, you know what I'm saying, or to see what I was about type of thing. And, you know, and from there, I, I feel like, you know, you saw like, yeah, this guy's ready to, you know, be a leader and all this type of things. And, um, yeah, bro, I just, you know, I really appreciate that encounter. And from there on, like I said, it's been, you know, we've just been going forward. So Absolutely, man. Um, that's important, man. I mean, that's just important in life is to, to give back. Uh, and obviously, man, when you see potential in people or, you know, if anyone, you know, you you want to be able to challenge them from all different aspects, man, to see whether or not they are who they are and to see whether or not they will continue to be who they are. You know, the consistency mm -hmm. within that regard uh, and, you know, just seeing that and knowing that and understanding that about you because I mean, you're newly promoted, uh, but I could see an immense amount of potential within you that could also be utilized pretty much throughout our platoon, which was, um, and we had a great time, man. And I do appreciate the bond that myself and you actually did create um, and start, you know, at that standpoint, man. And here we are, you know, years later, pretty yeah. much, you know, feeling and reminiscing pretty much on the same things that are as persistent from where they were from an initial standpoint. Uh, and, you're out doing pretty much what you're doing, you know, with your family, you know, continuing to uh, provide and continue to be the person that you are. Uh, and that just speaks volumes pretty much about you as a person and, and taking those tutelage or those moments of tutelage, man, and applying them to your life and continuing to be who you are. Uh, so it was nothing short of what I saw from, a, from, from the start to where I see right now, man. So uh, for the most part, man, you you've been head on and pretty consistent and persistent with, uh, with who you were pretty much from the very beginning. So that's a plus. That's a contribution pretty much to yourself, uh, the discipline you have within yourself to continue to be who you are. So uh, that's big, man. I mean, in my opinion, it's yeah. big or whatnot. And I appreciate that, man. You, you want to continue to see that amongst the people you know you kind of you uh you forge those bonds with yeah. them and continue to see them do better and be better and continue to be who they are. Yeah, for sure. I think, like you said, that was that was the reason we, you know, had that bond because, again, I just remember, you know, all of our conversations about, um, you know, how we manifest, you know, we go for what we want and things like that. And I remember, like, the ETS process, you know, we, you, know you had moved to, um, you had moved to, uh, um, ops or whatever, and then um, you know, what I mean, so you down there, you know, getting your, getting your process, get out of the military and stuff, and you was like, yeah, man, I was like, what you gonna do with stuff? You like, I'm moving to North Carolina, I'm gonna be a state trooper. I'm like, I'm like, you gonna be a cop? I'm like, you know, we were talking back and forth stuff like that, and um, yeah, man, you like, yeah, man, I go to academy this day, blah, 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 and I was like, man, I know you gonna go out there and do it, man. Like here you are, you know, almost four years in, you know, really, like I said, doing, doing great things in this community, you know, carrying yourself with high esteem and all these type of things. You know what I mean, really, you know representing yourself, you know, the state of North Carolina, all these things at the top, you know what I mean, really, you know, the top level, and, you know, it just couldn't be done any better, bro, so, like, for real, man, just proud of you, bro, you know, you keep grinding, I mean, I know, you know, things in our life, you know, don't go as planned all the time, but, you know, as long as we can, as long as we take care and do the things we can control, man, really, you know, put effort in the things we can control, bro, everything gonna work, work out, you know, keep God first, obviously, and you always been a man, of, you know what I mean, of God, and that was another thing that really, you know what I mean, Brought up, you know what I mean? Had we had another relationship on like a spiritual level, you feel what I'm saying? Like out, you always brought God. Every time we get into something, you know what I mean? That's we rough or we going through a hard time. You always, you know, you spoke about God being in and stuff like that. But that was a big thing, you know. I was like, that, I mean, that was cool, you know, like, to see to show that you didn't have no, you know, no shame in, you know, what I mean, knowing knowing the Lord was in your life type stuff like that. So that's very important, man. That was cool, bro. Well, I don't think I could, you know, forsake him or you know, um, not include him in who I am, you know, I was brought up in the churches, man. So, I mean, I didn't talk much about it, but, you know, for people who could relate to, mm -hmm. um, 
my upbringing and understand that then obviously you you want to you know continue to shower you know not necessarily shower that love up upon god because god already knows that you love him mm -hmm. uh god has been in my life man from shoot obviously since the day i was even thought about right and for the most part man you know growing up i grew up in a church uh, my mom was big on religion um and at that time you know i didn't really understand much about it mm -hmm. because it's like well i'm doing what my mom tell me to do because i'm supposed to do what she tells me to do i mean my dad wasn't there um i lost my dad when i was three weeks old um to uh senseless violence you know uh but for the most part man you know i allowed the positives from what my dad you know his intention was or at least his intentions were pretty much to do for our family whatnot i allowed the positive to you know kind of really seep into my life along with religion uh to kind of propel me to this position um but it's always been big you know and i mean again that was something that myself and you discussed about we talked about um about him being first in my life and i mean he'll continue to be first in my sure. life um uh, without him there is no me um so well, him I, is no, none of us like yeah. that's what really a lot of people don't even say i mean trying i ain't trying to cut you off but like like just the word religion you know i mean that was made up by somebody like a man to put a title on basically your spiritual beliefs in a higher power mm -hmm. and that higher power is god no matter which way nobody labels it anywhere it goes you know what i'm saying like god created the heaven and the earth or whatever you call the heaven and or whatever they call it, you know what i'm saying like God is is created. He's everything. You know what I'm saying? All the energies in the world, all the anything in this world that's created is from God, from a higher power, more than us. And a lot of people really don't understand that. You know, they like to they like to get down to the like like the specifics of a religion. Like, oh, it's this person or that person and that person. But like at the end of the day, I'm telling you, it's more than it's more than us anyway. That's what people gotta understand. Not right. you know your choice. I think I think the, you know, the religion was brought in to have a a preface of how you wanted to receive, you know, your spiritual guidance. So who do you, uh, who do you want to follow in the spiritual realm? I think that's where the, the 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 religion aspect, you know, was put into place for like overall. But right. the, all the in any in any of them that you go and look, you know, any other religion that you go and look look past, basically in, all of them get their energy and all this other stuff from a higher a higher being, a higher purpose. So like, like yeah, man, this is really the the purpose I really want to get people to understand, like. It's not about just specifically saying, oh, you, you know, you, I'm not saying you, I'm not trying to, you know, no, like no, say that I'm you was raised in church, because obviously that's how we was raised, you know, our, our generation is different now. More people like me analyze stuff different now. We learn different things. We have different views and different aspects, you know, of, you know, of a whole, whole different spectrum, you feel what I'm saying? Right. Just, a, just a, of even how we've been exposed to different things, you know what I'm saying? Like how we come from an era of just the beginning of technology to you know outside you know the eighties nineties kids you know us kids you know what I mean I'm, I'm for real bro no I'm just... I I I don't, I don't mean to cut y'all I laugh about it because man I didn't even know what a cell phone was man in high school well matter of fact in even elementary school yeah um internet what was internet I mean internet internet was us was freaking Ethernet you know the little AOL dial up, dial -up yeah, yeah I remember yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah fact you couldn't yeah. use the phones at the yeah. same time so it's yeah. like I mean. Obviously, we've come a long way, mm -hmm. um, and obviously, with with any religion or with any belief, you know, it's that person's right, or it's within their belief, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't think nobody's trying to cast uh, religion upon people or whatnot, and I mean, rightfully so, because it's within your your constitutional rights to believe in what you believe in. Mm -hmm. But you know, at the same time, you know, I honestly believe that people should respect other people's beliefs. Oh, yeah. More so than, okay, well, I believe this and I believe that. Well, you know what? That's what makes us unique. It makes us unique as people. Um, and that just really further kind of um, exploits pretty much your constitutional rights. <clears throat> Whether or not people want to believe in that or not, mm -hmm. um, you can't say, well... I believe in so and so, so that means you got to believe in what I believe in. Mm -hmm. No, that that's not what that means, right? I could agree to disagree. I can comprehend why you may feel the way that you feel, and I can respect the reason why you feel the way that you feel. You know, rightfully so. You know, the same thing should be in return. Hey, if it's something that I believe in, if that's what I genuinely believe in, then obviously, man, you respect it and not try to interfere or. Um, you know, just create this false narrative just because you have 
something or someone that says or does something within this religion, that doesn't mean you generalize, you know, other people for feeling the same way or not feeling the same way. But that doesn't mean you generalize people based off of any bad instance or whatever it may be, you know, with within that religion. So I just think it's just really about a a, a great deal of, of comprehension when it comes to that. And just really a matter of respect. I got you. I, I ain't mean to cut you off, but I, I get what you're trying to say. Like, you're trying to say, like, you know, how people feel like, you know, some Islamic uh, re- people who follow Islamic religion, I'm not trying to put stuff out there. Mm-hmm. Are they are radicals and stuff like that? But no, that's not the case. Let me tell you something, bro. These these people who be talking about they Christian need these churches and stuff, bro. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something, bro. God God is a person who God knows who people are. You know what I'm saying? God not going you know, at the end of the day, he's the only person that can judge you. So I feel like when when pastors and stuff get up there and tell their congregation that people are not be accepted because the choices they make in their life and all these other all this other stuff they should be sentenced to death and all this type of stuff. Yeah, bro, okay, I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. God, you know, the Bible was put into place, you know what I'm saying, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, bro. You know what I'm saying? This is the new era. Like, God, man, bro, I don't like, but yeah, I just don't like, I get what you're saying. But yeah, that definitely, that irks me, bro. Like, and to go even further along with that, right? So I, I spent time overseas um, uh, on a deployment uh, and where we actually work with some of the Iraqis. And man, I, work closely pretty much with uh Iraqi police and pretty much our Iraqi interpreter and what they say about Iraqis it, it that if they if they're to say that about them then what's that to say about the people that we're working with and none of those people you know fit that description they were very humble they were very nice they were just, you know human beings just like us yeah I mean granted you got people out there that call themselves or represent themselves as Iraqis that went out and did you know, whatever they did or whatnot, but that doesn't generalize it. That doesn't say that, hey, every person that's in Iraq is the same person. And I just think that when you continue to generalize and characterize all people pretty much as one entity or just one one whole, I think that's where you begin making, you know, a huge mistake because now instead of such and such, so and so, it's y'all. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the it's the the pronunciation of, of y'all rather than, well, this person did this or that person did that. Um, regardless of what ethnicity or what race or where they come from, you, you can't generalize because that's, that's where you start seeing everybody as one more sense, seeing pretty much, hey, look, it's this person. That's just like in the military, right? If one of us do something bad, if one of us late for formation, what happens? Everybody is massively punished because mm-hmm. one person is not here and mm-hmm. whatnot. So is that fair? Absolutely not. But obviously we're one team, one fight. But that's just within the military, mm-hmm. right? But just outside of that spectrum, man, I just I don't think you should be generalizing people as one. Well. Yeah, I mean, I think even in the military aspect, and I mean, it could all come down to, you know, Person, different personnel who can be accountable and all this type of stuff. But I get you saying like about that. But yeah, bro, definitely. Um, I, I like the fact that you're saying like you know when you when you start to characterize and really try to label people, you know, you start you you starting off bad already anyway because you already have that that mindset and that aspect that you're better than somebody. You feel what I'm saying or you know somebody you know basically like you're better than somebody. I mean, first of, that's that's one thing I have I've had you know work on myself not you know judging people and not really just you know what I mean like trying to. Um, you know, really just go straight at, you know, why this person did that and did these things in their life. Cause I don't know what they like, you know what I'm saying? Personally, right. and not everybody's life not the same and everybody's choices and everybody, you know, events in their life do something to them differently. You know what I mean? Mentally, physically, spiritually, all these type of things. So the best thing I try to do, man, is just really show people the utmost respect at all the time I meet somebody, you know what I'm saying? Just really try to, you know, treat people how I want to be treated. That's the golden rule, man. Like really, I, you know what I mean? Learning that growing up, I just really try to keep that with me. And like, and then like, so yeah, man, we just really have to, you know, Really look You gotta start yourself You gotta look in the mirror man If you don't start with yourself bro And really try to focus on Fixing you All these other problems With all these other people Y'all be worried about And all this other stuff Don't even matter Because you're not even good With yourself You feel what I'm saying Like Cause at the end of the day bro, We're gonna live and die as us You feel what I'm saying No matter how you feel about Somebody else and what you what you following them doing in their life and all the other stuff because at the end of the day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be Anthony and I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna be Dave. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna we're gonna continue to go forward and we're gonna yeah, we're gonna go for it. I mean so it 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 bodes well, man, to treat people how you wanna be treated. And bro, you hit the hit the nail right on the head, man. Um 
it starts with us. It starts with the individual. It starts with you. Um, you know, I could have saw you when you first came in, when you first got to Germany and been like, man, come another crappy soldier that they're sending pretty much to the unit or whatnot. So now we got to do X, Y, Z. But I didn't. It's more so of a, of an understanding, right? And that, that was taught just based off of experience and life just growing up is not judging people, you know, based off of the initial um, you have to be able to understand people because again, you don't know what that person has been through. I never would have known anything that you had been through prior to coming to Germany had I not had an actual conversation with you. So for me to prejudge would be prejudiced towards you based off of what I may have wanted to speculate. That would have been wrong of me because then that that's now uh, putting you behind the eight ball and it's like, okay, well, he's this, he's that. Well, how do I know that, right? How do I know if he is X, Y, Z? And you turned out to actually be pretty much one of the more profound people within our unit um, and made, you know, huge contributions pretty much towards bettering yourself from an individual standpoint as well as helping better the unit pretty much from an individual standpoint. And that helped us in a sense. But again, like you mentioned, like you said, and as we continue to say, you can't judge people based off of how you initially, you know, see them. I mean, I can judge people based off how I initially see them on the side of the road, but I don't. Right? I don't know them people from Adam to Apple. Um, but you go and you talk to them and you, you know, try to get a base understanding of why they're doing what they're doing. And you get some people that are receptive of that. And then you get some people that are like, they're already, oh, well... Again, they're offensive on the offense or what? There, so they become more offended and slash try to defend themselves rather than understand the reason behind why I'm doing what I'm doing or whatnot yeah. or why I've stopped you. I mean, some people they say, "Well, you stopped me because because I'm black." Well, I I don't stop anybody because of race, right? And I they specifically tell them my reason for stopping them, um, and I have to kind of educate some people sometimes, let them know, like, look. Um, if I knew, do you think I would have stopped you because I knew you were black? You was like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's dark, right? You're driving by doing a hundred plus miles an hour. How can I even see that you are remotely black if it's dark outside? I mean, it's pitch dark in my vehicle, and you're driving past me. There is no way possible for me to know what. You the the color of your skin is the only thing I know is a a vehicle pretty much that's driving at a high rate of speed and upon me approaching you I didn't identify you as being who you are but again that's not even the reason for our encounter the reason for our encounter is is for what you're doing or whatnot but people automatically kind of just trying to sometimes make that uh initial impression or that initial distinction based off of who I am as mm-hmm. law enforcement and not as okay with that well. well let me see what this person's about. And even people that I, you know, place on the rest, some people, they come or some people, they have an initial impression of me based off of the uniform. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but before I leave the jail, that person is shaking my hand and they're apologizing for, man, I'm so sorry that I looked at you this way because you know the, the 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 stereotypes and things that are going on, you know, in the world uh, with law enforcement. So, obviously, my initial reaction or my initial perception of you is this: I was like, well, I can understand that, um, rightfully so. I said, but I haven't given you a reason to feel that way um, because I wouldn't treat you how I I wouldn't want to treat you any other any other way that I would want to be treated, right? So. My mom taught me to be respectful to people. My mom taught me to uh, make sure I treat people how I want to be treated and just to be respectful. Um, so if I'm to treat you any way outside of that, then I don't expect for you to respect me. I wouldn't expect for anybody to respect me if I sat up, I walked up to the car and I talked to you like you're a piece of trash. Yeah. I mean, because I don't see people as trash. Facts. I see people that, you know, make honest and genuine mistakes. And sometimes you go along, you skate that line until you're actually caught. Mm-hmm. I told a lady that the other day, um, 
But see, that's I, I don't yeah. That's one thing I've had to learn. Like, bro, you really we. That's what that's the thing about it. Like you said, we skate that line. You we they people skate. You know they skate on that line. You know, get by, get by, get by. Keep doing the bad thing. You know, get by, get out, getting caught. Why are you keep doing the bad thing? Like, why are you being reckless and you know just causing and trying to be more? You know, have more turmoil and just really just be responsible as an adult and just really you know. Like my mama always taught me before I learned how to drive. She was like, "You got to drive for you and everybody else on the road." You know, a lot of people don't understand that, bro. Like, so like, but man, it's like, it just even past driving. I'm just saying, doing stuff. We got to really, bro. That's one thing I really had to you know teach myself in my own life, bro. Like, if you really want to go for the things you want to, bro, and really, you know, just really dedicate yourself to the people who who you love in your life. All these type of things, bro. Just do the right things, bro. Everything's gonna go even much better. Like, I'm not saying. Things not things won't go good when you're doing bad stuff. Right. But at the end of the day, all that bad stuff is not gonna amount to anything that's gonna be able to have legitimacy for your family, any of these type of things, you know what I'm saying? So like I, I just don't know, man. This is one thing I've definitely learned in my life of growing up. Really, you know what I mean? I've been doing a lot, uh, you know, I ain't gonna say bad, but then it wasn't just the goodest things in my life growing up, you know what I'm saying? But like that's one thing I've had to learn, like really had to dedicate myself to you know, my people, my family, myself, you know, a lot of these different things. And um, it's just really, man, about doing the right thing, or at least trying to do the right thing. But when you try to do the right thing, bro, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It might not always go right. The, the, the right, you know, it might not always go right, but you're trying to do is your attention, what you know, what your actions are, what, all this type of stuff, what you're speaking of, you know what I mean? So, like, it's growth growth and, and just being able to mature. Um, a lot of, some of us mature, and then some of us don't mature. We might mature in a good way, and then again, we might mature in a bad way. Uh, but it really just depends on the overall thing that we talked about from an initial standpoint. It depends on the person uh, and whether or not that person wants to mature to do better or whether or not that per- person wants to mature to do to continue to do bad. Um, and obviously, we know that there's a lot more at stake for myself and you uh, because we have families, right? We have little girls, right? For and sure. I mean, for anybody that is a genuine and true parent would know that the 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 best thing that we can be for our family and for our kids is a great role model. So if if either one of us displayed ourselves in any way around our kids, then what are we displaying to our kids that it's okay to accept, right? And if we don't display to them in any fashion or form that, hey, listen, these are the type of people that you at least want to surround yourself with. When you become an adult, you're going to do whatever it is you feel is best for you Mm -hmm. but within from the moment of adolescence to the time that these kids exit our homes what are we presenting to them you know are we presenting to them the good the bad and the ugly or are we just presenting some form of uh, fairy tale lifestyle to them Mm -hmm. right you 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 want your child to know and understand what kind of man you know they typically want in their life or whatnot Mm -hmm. um and that's just by being a, a good role model for them um and as long as we instill that and we continue to to show that to them you know at least we've done our part right mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that that's what they're going to follow mm-hmm. outside of the home mm-hmm. it don't mean that but at least we know we've done our jobs as parents right and that just goes into another realm of what does it mean to be a parent? Yeah, man. Days, that's right? a, yeah. Like, but I, I like the fact that you said, you know, you got to be able to introduce your, you know, expose your children to the good, bad, and the ugly because, you know, I'm like, yeah, our house, you know, it's a safe place or whatever it is. But, I mean, the world, you know I mean, it's 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 a it's a good and bad place. You know what I mean? It's a lot of good that goes on in the world. It's a lot of bad. And it's a lot of stuff with that, you know, people have to be prepared for, you know, um, workforce, you know, competition, whatever it is, you know, just being being um available and being you know above average in a, in in the society to be able to really you know get ahead of life and just really like I said just be prepared on all different type of aspects because you we you know we've exposed them to yeah we have finer things in our life and we you know your parents work to be able to you know provide for you have nice things and all this stuff but mm-hmm. work we got you know we work to get these things and you know teach them work ethic and teach them you know responsibilities teach them morals and you know character and respect and all these type of things is important to you know continue to really um instill it in, and in i you know like i said in children lives just children period not even if you're if they're your kids because all parents are not good parents bro some you know some parents don't give their children the guidance that you know 
a parent like myself or you had in our life, you know what I mean, growing up. Because I, I grew up with no father as well, so having strong women in our life is very beneficial. Right. Well, it was very beneficial because now we're men, you feel what I'm saying? Like, right. even though we had to step out and do things on our own to, you know, to grow and develop as men, you feel what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it's that footprint and that foundation that was laid by, you know, strong, a strong woman in our life to be able to, you know, get to the point where we are now, like you said, as fathers and parents and things like that. So, yeah, man, I just, I just feel like it's important to be able to really have this effect on, you know, children, period, is really to be able to, you know, have that, um, have that sense of care and openness for, you know, any child and really just be able to be there, you know what I mean? Just really, like, like I'm a parent, I, always, I, I think I've always had this just, you know, for people regardless, but definitely, you know, children, because, like, they're kids, I mean, we were our kids one day, and some kids grow up, you know, differently and, and faster than other children, so I just always try to, you know, when I speak to children nowadays, stuff like that, man, I just really tell them to, you know, enjoy life. Don't try to grow up too fast. Like, really just, you know, analyze and, and really try to go for what you want now. So when you become an adult and you have that same drive and that motivation when you're when you on your own, it, you know what I mean? It's, the only thing going to stop you is you, basically, you know what I'm saying? Because now, a lot, you know, a lot of kids want to do different things in their life and they have parents. And some might say, yeah, some might say, you know, whatever it is. But I'm just saying just to have that mindset of that you can achieve anything in your life, you know what I'm saying? You know, it, hopefully it's for the better, you know what I mean? Because it's not really, it's not that that, that easy, to, I mean, it's not that hard to achieve bad things, so I ain't gonna lie to you. But um, it's just about, you know, really trying to go forward and be the best you can be, man. I really try to, you know, um, uh, announce that and really get that, that message across to as many, you know, people as period, but definitely children because, like I tell my daughters all the time, y'all are the next, you know what I mean? Y'all are really the future, future for us, you know what I'm saying? Like, Y'all gonna be the biggest technology wave now. All this stuff. Y'all gonna be learning about all this stuff. Y'all gonna be, you know, in those markets, in this, uh, in this environment. And we, we will too. But they'll be, you no. Know, that's gonna be their domain. From there's gonna be their time frame. All this type of stuff. And I just tell them y'all gonna, you know, do, th- you know, do great things and really, you know, change the, the earth for a better place. You know what I'm saying? I tell my daughters that, and I really truly believe that. And I, I think a lot of people, a lot of parents, should tell their kids that more often. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. a lot of parents should tell their kids, oh. Someone tell me you ain't gonna be nothing, or you just gonna, oh, you gonna be like this person, you gonna be like that person, blase, blase, blase. Instead of trying to encourage them, you feel me? I think, I think, and I think that's their way of trying to encourage them, but it's not encouragement. You feel what I'm saying? You just diving them more into a hole because they see the person you saying who they gonna be like, mm-hmm. and it's not of anyone of good standard or good, you know what I mean? Of you know success or any type of positivity in their life. So what do they, what do you think they do to a kid? You know, just really continue to bring them down. So. I just think there's a lot that, you know, needs to be, you know, done for parenthoods and, and, and different, you know, aspects. But you know, I just try to stay in my lane and, again, try to get on my platform and just voice to, you know, meetings of kids, wherever they are. I mean, that they can accomplish anything. They can do whatever they want to. That, you know, if you, if you you know, stay solid, you stay dedicated to yourself, you believe in yourself, you, you know, treat people how you want to be treated, treat people with respect, you know, things of that nature, care for other people, have more, um, you know, be more open to be able to receive, you know, people's um, feelings and put be considerate of people's, you know, emotions and all these type of things, you know what I mean? It's very important just of, of being good humans, you know, try to really just, you know, again, be that that next positive wave of generation because, again, these kids who are coming up, they're going to be, you know, the teachers to keep, teach our kids, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking about even these, you know, the millennials and all this type of stuff, they're going to be the next generation to teach our kids and, and you know, vice versa and vice versa. So I just really want to be able to have a message out there of, of positivity and just excellence for you know our generation going forward here so i think that that's that's important um i think probably the best job in, the, in my life pretty much is being a parent uh i love being a dad yeah. um awesome. yeah. we we freaking we we grew up without ours man so uh to know what i didn't understand and what i didn't have as a dad i want to be able to give back to my kids and to be able to instill those same things um about earning rather than just receiving Mm -hmm. right you can receive anything but what is that necessarily teaching you that's just teaching you that anybody can just give you anything but did you earn it right for anything that my kids have earned or that they have in their possession they have earned from doing well in school from doing well at home uh and just basically utilizing the, the very things that they're that's been instilled at home um a lot of people that have kids, um, maybe they didn't have that that growing up. Maybe they don't have that mindset. Uh, that's not to say that they can't, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that's not to say that they can't change their lives in the way because we don't know their circumstance. We don't know what they may have going on within their own household that may be 
uh, preventing them from being able to display that at all, to be able to interact with their kids that way. Um, so, yeah, a lot does have to be in homes, but at the same time, people have to want to be helped instead of be stubborn to it. Um, but again, it's very important pretty much for um, parents nowadays to really interact with their kids uh, with well, a lot of stuff that goes on today. Um, it's important. It's important to uh, have very, very important conversations with kids. Um, and no, you don't want them to grow up too fast. You want them to actually be able to enjoy their lives as kids. They're not adults because if they were adults, then obviously they would be able to be out on their own and uh, take care of themselves. Their minds develop differently than uh, than other people. Some develop pretty much at a at a very rapid pace, and then you have some that develop, you know, at a very gradual pace. Um, that doesn't mean that the child that develops at a gradual pace is no different from the person that develops at a rapid pace. It just means that they learn different, right? Uh, but overall, you, I don't know, you just, you got to take your time. You got to, you got to take your time when you're actually with your kids or whatnot and just letting them be kids and, um, be that positive energy in their life. Um, because a lot of kids need that. Um, and you also have to be honest with them as well. Um, and want to be stuff. open with you to like right. that's, a, that's a big thing for me. I didn't mean to cut you off, especially like um, you know having daughters, man. Like um, you know, I was raised by a, a woman, mm-hmm. and I didn't you know a lot of things and a lot of situations in my life happened, and I didn't really feel you know coming to speak to my mother as comfortable as you know speaking to my mother um, as I even though she you know she would be open and let us know you know we can come talk to her about anything, but it was just that barrier of you know I was a guy, she was a female. I really you know what I mean it was kind of like. Um, but with my daughters now, I, I really try to, you know, um, hon- like hone on to them. And even my wife now, we really, you know, try to discuss to them now and really put it into them. Like, they can come talk to us about anything. Because I really, like, genuinely, I've, I've been through, you know, 10 times probably what they're going to go through in their life. You know what I'm saying? All of us as parents, you know what I mean? Especially from a guy's perspective. Like, I'm a man. When I was a, when I was a kid, you feel what I'm saying? I knew what was going on. I, you know what I mean? I know, I know kids' intentions, all this type of stuff. Right. But I just want my daughters to be... First of all, you know, be focused on, you know, things that are, things that are going to be able to um, boost them and, you know, put them ahead in life. You know what I mean? Because, you know, guys are going to be there. It's going to be guys just like, I hope, sons and mamas tell their sons are going to be girls, you know, in the future or whatever. Right. But, like, man, I just want them to really be open to be able to come discuss anything with us. Like, really, don't ever be afraid to come speak to us because I'm, I'm going to have you back regardless. You know what I mean? Whichever way it goes, you feel know what I'm saying? I'm going to have you back because you're my, you're my, you're my kids. You right. know what I'm saying? So, like... It's just a big thing for me. I really want, you know, I think a lot more parents should really have that door of openness for their kids to really come genuinely speak to them about anything because if they don't feel safe to speak to their parents, who are they going to speak to, bro? Or are they going to speak to people who gonna, who not going to give them the best advice? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, bro, like, that's just really my biggest thing for me, man. Like, just taking this journey of the father every day, man. You know, really being, you know, working on being patient, all these type of things, being more emotionally available for my daughters because, like, especially my, um, uh, my my second daughter Zuri, she's very sensitive and very emotional. So like the smallest things are tick like she would but like bro, she would the smallest thing she'll be crying, but she I'm sad, like she not like so like it's really a lot, man, that goes and I'm I love it, man. I'm, I'm just you know what I mean, I'm just she she's very friend she's a she, like she's an emotional person, you know what I mean? So like and it's just man, it's gonna be a journey and I'm I'm very excited for the journey that's ahead and just Yeah man. My youngest she uh I was yesterday we were eating breakfast. Um, and I had disclosed that my niece, her cousin had, uh, got into a car accident, uh, Florida, which she's fine, by the way, just tore. And the one that graduated? Yeah. Man, yeah. Yeah, I she, she, Look. Okay. So she, well, I'm uh, glad she's fine. Thank you, Lord. Okay. She, uh, so Zari is just sitting there with her. She's, I hear her sniffling and I'm like, I said, Zari, I said, what's wrong? She said. Oh, daddy, I'm so sad. I hope Deja's okay. And I was like, I said, Zari, would you like to call Deja to make sure she's okay? She said, mm-hmm. So I get my phone, FaceTime. I say, here, talk talk to your cousin and whatnot. And then my cut, my niece, she's sitting there. She's like, what's wrong? And then Zari, she's like, yeah, I just want to make sure you're okay. I was worried about you. But she's only six years old, right? She's already in tune with her emotions. 
And that that just, at least for me, man, that just shows that she she has a very good sense of how she feels about stuff, yeah. right? And knowing that she she loves you know her family or whatnot, she's very big on family, yeah. uh, just as well as my oldest. She's very big on family, but to see that man, that just that kind of that made it made me. It was a bittersweet moment because it's like, Dad, I feel how she feels and I understand how she feels, but it's also great to know that she has that love and care, you know, pretty much like for her, her family members, whatever. So I I thought that that was pretty cool. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. But yeah, man, it was a great time. We've been talking for 40 minutes, man. I know, man. No, we could talk. We could talk all, all right, day, We do this. Man. Yeah, man, we do this. But, you know I mean? I got this four and a half bike, my bike ride I'm going to get back to yeah. to get back home. But, man, it's definitely, you know, a pleasure. I'm glad we finally actually, you know, Finally got to be, you know, you know, meet up and stuff like that. Like I said, I've been living around the corner from you for a whole year. I didn't even know. But I know you had spoke, you know, when I lived in New York, that, you know, when you had got down here, you had showed me your house and stuff. I remember you posting on Facebook. Right. Probably you had first moved in. I'm like, look at my man out there doing big things and stuff. Man. Trying to, man. Yeah, man. So I'm glad, you know, like I said, God just, you know, working mysterious ways. You know what I mean? I, like I said, we've been around, you know, we've always had a close relationship since we met. But, like, you know what I mean? We've always been there. Close proximity, and then, you know, didn't even know. So, right. but yeah, man, it's all good. You know, we're like we here now, we know now. So yeah, man, it's definitely gonna be you know more of, you know, we'll see each other and things like that. And, yeah, we'll do, you know do some family oriented stuff. You know, you know, my house is all you always walk to my house and you know, likewise. You know, yeah, so yeah, man, of course, you know, so definitely yeah, a pleasure I, speaking to you. Yeah, man, appreciate yeah. you, you know, for wanting to be a part of my, you know, my, my my show and be on my platform and things like that. And yeah, bro, sure. Hey, man, uh, likewise, I appreciate it. Um, at any given time, man. I mean. I know I'm um I know I work a lot. Um, but for the most part well for the most part, man, I, I make myself available. Uh I know I wasn't available early this uh what was it? Was it yesterday? Dude, I was tired. Well but not that. Yeah. That's I, okay. I, I came home and showered and after that, man, I I fell asleep on the floor where I normally fall asleep. So <laughs> um it be like that, man. But yeah, man, any given time, man, it's all good. For sure, man, for sure. Yeah, but Need some doubt, man. Again, appreciate yes, it, man. Much love. You know, again, definitely grateful for you, bro. Yes, definitely sir. grateful for you, know, again, you know, being a part of that, um, my introduction into my, you know, my, my NCO leadership lifestyle, just everything. I mean, God, like I said, we just always had that connection of, you know, mutual respect, high level of love, you know, as of men, you know, as, as men, all that type of stuff. So, yeah, bro, you know, just doing great things. To you know, boost it, you know, boost the community and just go forward and just be excellent, bro. You no, know, like, like, like you've always been. So, much appreciate it, man. Until next time, y'all, grateful gap. Gotta get on this bike, my this bike ride, get up out of here, <laughs> get these nine, get nine miles today, did nine miles today. So, that's what's gonna be accomplishing. So, I'm, I'm excited. I've been doing a week straight on my bike ride. So, yeah, man, until next time, y'all, follow me on, um, on Instagram at grateful gap podcast, follow me on Twitter at grateful underscore gap. Send me some emails, some feedback, things like that. It was a great you know, brother talk today with my guy. And, um, yeah, man, send me an email at gratefulgappodcast at gmail.com. And uh, follow me on Facebook at Grateful Gap. Until next time, y'all. Peace.